Hello and welcome to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we are joined by Charge Nurse Rose Nguki and we will be discussing about hand hygiene which is celebrated worldwide on the 5th of May. Karibu sana Rose. Welcome. So to start us off, why is hand hygiene important? Uh, hand hygiene is very important. Number one, because most of them germs that we correct allowed we are able to transmit them from one place to the next from one person to the next using our own hands and for that reason the only way we can be able to cut that chain is if we washed our hands and not just washing hands washing our hands properly mm -hmm. okay and uh, what is what are some of the best ways that one can use to wash their hands in general there are two ways that one can make that they have attained hand hygiene. One is what we all know, washing our hands with soap and water. That is the mainstay of hand washing because many times when your hands are dirty, you want to wash with soap and water to clear off any germs that could be sitting on your hands. However, you can also use the alcohol hard shell, which is a a chemical containing alcohol that helps you also to kill the germs allowed the hands. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you do not use the alcohol hard gel if your hands are physically soiled. You need to remove the soil first before you use the alcohol. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something about uh, the percentage of alcohol that is required for you to ensure that your hands are thoroughly cleaned. Maybe you could mention that. Yeah, when you talk about the alcohol hard, hard gel, mm -hmm. there are many in the market today. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you need to be very sure of, if you are going to use any, you must be able to check on the content. How much percent of alcohol does it contain? It must be 60 and above. Mm -hmm. Below that, it may not achieve the, uh, what you want it to do, that is killing the germs from your hands. Mm -hmm. What are some of the behavior or mannerisms that one should embrace to ensure that uh, they carry on with the hand hygiene? The best thing is to realize that in everything that you do, remember you need to wash your own hands. Mm -hmm. Don't rely on me to wash my hands for you to be safe. Wash yours. Always imagine that that person who you have interacted with had not washed their hands. If I'm coming through that door, I imagine whoever opened it before had not washed their hands. So what do I need to do after that? After I get into the house or to that room, the first thing I want to do is wash my hands. Mm -hmm. but the key thing is that most of the diarrheal diseases that we see around, uh, you usually have to, had to have touch somebody else's feces for you to get the disease. And how does it reach there? It's through our hands. For example, you go to the toilet and you do not wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Then what happens in the next food you touch? You leave a little there. I come without your mind and the knowledge that you didn't had not washed your hands, I consume of it. And that's where I get sick. Mm -hmm. yes. So what else can we do to prevent the spread of infection when it, that comes with the poor hand hygiene. Again, the other things that we always have to remember is uh, if, for example, apart from the diarrhea diseases, we also have the flu. Now it has started later, it's soon going to be a flu season. Most of the flus are not transmitted by flying aloud, it's through our hands. Because I will sneeze and we have the habit of covering our nose with our hands. hands. All the bacteria is mm -hmm. left on our hands. So the next time I shake your hand, I've just transferred the viruses, the bacteria from myself mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. And therefore you might find that in a household, I start with a flu, by the time the week is ending, all of us in the house are sick. Even at workplace, you find you come on Monday, you have a flu, by Friday, the whole office is sick. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself what is going wrong. Mm -hmm. It's because many of us don't wash our hands, we don't know how to cough properly, so we cough on our hands and we go transferring mm -hmm. the germs from one person to the next. Mm -hmm. So how should one sneeze or cough? Uh, you have got three different ways of doing the, the right way to sneeze or cough. Mm -hmm. Number one, I want to start with the sneeze. It's Sometimes it's so spontaneous, you have got no time to react. The ideal way is that 
when it is so spontaneous, turn away from people so that you don't sputter or mm. you are cause unknown to them. The other thing is use disposable tissue to cover your nose and your mouth as you cough. That way after you are done with it, you throw it away. We discourage the use of handkerchief because you pocket it and that allows the microorganism to multiply and then those germs will keep infecting yourself and others. The other way of coughing is you cough inside your chart or your blouse like this. That way you contain whatever you are sneezing out. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, then you do it and be at the inner side of your armpit like this. That way you also prevent the sputter going to the people who are allowed you. Mm. So Rose, how would you demonstrate a, hand, a proper hand washing process? Okay, now uh, proper hand washing means number one, you have got to have the facilities. Mm -hmm. You've got to have learning water. I not necessarily with a sink because sometimes you may not have the sink, but there has to be learning water. Mm -hmm. Avoid washing from a communal basin because you are washing with dirt inside there. So you have to make sure that you have learning water. And when you go to the tub, before you do anything else is to find out, do I really have that running water? So you turn off the tub. Mm -hmm. The ideal way, avoid touching the tub with your hands at wherever you can avoid it. So for this, we, we just do it this way. I know there is water. After that, I have my soap, I have my hard paper tiles. Then I can be able to start my hard washing. Then you wet your hard first. So you pass your hard through water. They are wet. When they are wet, you are able to hold, hold soap better. Then you take your soap. Ideally, again, avoid touching with your hands. So you I will do this, two should be enough. So that should be enough soap. Then you put your palms together, palm to palm, this way. So I'll do this, one, two, three, four, five. Then from there, I will go to in between my fingers. Mm -hmm. So I'll do this, one, two, three, four, five. From there, I move at the back of my hands. One, two, three, four, five, that way, I'm cleaning in between my fingers and along the fingertips. Then the other side, one, two, three, four, five. If you realize I've not cleaned the tip of my fingers, so for me to be able to do that, I will cup my fingernails mm -hmm. and to the middle of the opposite arm. I'll do this, one, two, three, four, five. That way cleans the middle of your hand and also the tip of your fingers. Then I go to the other one, one, two, three, four, five. Then from there, if you know, as I did all the procedure, the thumb is always alone. So you go to the thumb. One, two, three, four, five. Then one, two, three, four, five. Friction is very important. Then where you have not done is the rear knuckles. So you do your hearts like this. And then you go one, two, three, four, five. Interchange the heart. One, two, three, four, five. The only area remaining now is my wrist. So I'll come to my wrist. One, two, three, four, five. The other hand. One, two, three, four, five. With that way, there is nowhere you have left in your hand. Then I am ready to rinse my hand. You rinse your hand, making sure you remove all the soap. Many people, many times people complain the, whole, the soap is making their hearts mm. dry, but it's not the soap, it's because they don't rinse it properly from their hands. If you don't, it is cause your heart to start drying and chipping off. Mm. Once I am clean, I avoid putting my heart down uh, lower, this way, because the water from here is running back to my fingers. It should be like this, so that the water drips the opposite direction. Then I pick my hard paper towels. You don't need many of them, three are enough. For this, we'll wipe my heart this hard. You don't again lab against the heart because you will also destroy the skin of your mm -hmm. hand, so you dump the water away. Once you are done, this comes here. I go to the other heart. Sometimes you don't have this kind of a tap. You have the tap that you have got to uh, turn it off. Mm -hmm. 
on the, now the water is running you mm. can't continue running you take a hard paper tiles so after you are clean you avoid touching the tub with your bare hand you take your hard paper tiles and you turn off the water mm. so if i'm wearing uh jewel lens for example the ring you avoid having very tight lids because if things enter there and you can't clean so we, ideally is that when you are washing your hands it should be able to move rotate it so that you remove all the germs that are in that ring so if you have a ring in each and every finger you must rotate each one of them if you have a bangle or a watch you also have to remember you have to rotate it and clean it ideally you should avoid them depending on what you are doing and also the other one is nail varnish <laughs> nail varnish is one thing it makes our fingers beautiful but at the same time it can carry a lot of germs why when it starts to glow old where it is peeling off from your nail that's where the germs start to hide so if you have nail varnish you now have to be more careful when cleaning if it's starting to chip off you make sure you clean around okay. there and it's time to remove it so that it doesn't carry a lot of microorganisms mm. The longer they are, the more burden of germs they carry. So again, it will require you go nail by one, cleaning them. Mm. So mine are shorter, so you, I don't have to go nail by one. So when I do this, I am able to clean there. With wrong nails, it is not possible. So you do one by one. Mm. Remember, you do not have to wash with hard uh, soap and water and then go to the sanitizer. Sanitizer is when your hearts are not physically soiled. So if I'm going to use it, I said, remember, you have to check the content of the alcohol. It has to be 60 and above. Then when I come to it, I, again, I avoid touching the nozzle with my bare hands. I will do this. Uh, I just put two of them, should be enough. And then... I will go the same way I did with the soap and water is the same uh, procedure you follow. So I do one, two, three, four, five, 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 and I do this, then the list. By the time you are done, it should have dried up. That means your hearts are now safe. One thing that I would also want to, in, to insist on is to remember that the theme for this year is clean care. It's in your hand. That theme comes about because as much as we provide health care, our hands can also cause damage. And not just for the healthcare workers, this includes the visitors. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is prudent when you come to the hospital to see a patient, wash your hands before you, see, you enter to the patient's room and wash your hands before you exit. So that both ways, you do not transmit the infection. Your hands are safe wherever you go. I know we are in an African contest that shaking hearts is the mainstay, but at a time like this, sometimes you may ask ourselves, do I really want to shake your hands? But again, if you must, remember the next thing you want to stop by, washing your hands. Mm -hmm. So as you've heard it, hand hygiene is very important and core to each and every one of us, at least to prevent the dialogue disease. Thank you very much, Rose, for that insightful information. Join us next time for the next episode.